Good morning, class. How are you guys doing? Welcome to uh, another math lesson with Mr. Refer. Today, we're going to continue to dive into our unit four geometric figures unit. If you have your packet with you, you could please open up to lesson 4.4. We're going to be talking about distance with scale drawings, or in other words, word problems. And we're going to be talking about something called scale factor, which we talked about a little bit in the previous lesson, 4.3. So please open up your, your lessons to 4.4. Let me just share my screen with you. Awesome. Uh, so as usual with any of the lessons, uh, please take a moment, pause the video if you need to, and work on the bell work. The bell work is asking you to identify what the scale factor is. Uh, tell me what the perimeter is um, from A to B. All right. All right. So hope you had enough time to pause it. Let me dive in and try to walk this through with you, okay? We've talked about scale factor in the last lesson. And in this particular case, scale factor is indicating the word factor means multiplication, means uh, what is being multiplied to go from one number to the next. So if you look, I'm asking you from A to B, not from B to A. That's very important that you pay attention to this. A to B, which means we're gonna look at A's numbers and we're saying what multiplies to A to get you to B. Uh, for most of us, when you look at the numbers, you see 12 to 3, you see 16 to 4, you see 20 to 5. And for some of you guys thinking in your head, okay, well, all I do is multiply it by 4. But you got to understand, from B to A, yes, you multiply by 4. But from A to B, it's not the same. Because if I did 12 times 4, I do not get 3, right? But Mr. Rooker, but when I do 3 times 4, I get 12. You're right. But I'm asking you from A to B. All right, and how we figure that out, right? And we're gonna, as we dive further into this unit, and even when we get into our very next unit, which is called proportional relationships, you understand something that's how to find something called the unit rate, how to find something called the constant. And the way you do that is you take the second part and you divide it by the first part. And what do I mean here? I mean three divided by 12, not 12 divided by three. Because yes, I know in most situations, like when I do 12 divided by three, I get four. And if I do three times four, I get 12, but you're thinking about from A to B, okay? What times 12, and if I were to write it, it would look something like this. 12 multiplied by a question mark has to equal three, okay? And our very next unit, 4.5, which is a very small unit, I'm gonna substitute this question mark with something called a variable, which we talked about, which is like X. And we're gonna play around and say, okay, how do I solve that? And you're going to learn that we have to do something called the inverse, which you know and I know it means opposite. So this is multiplying. We would do the opposite, which means to divide. Okay? So what we end up getting is 3 divided by 12, which is actually 1 fourth. Okay? 1 fourth. So what is the scale ratio here? And as you can see here, it's 1 over 4. A ratio, as we talked about in the previous lesson, is a way of comparing one to another, one to something. In this case, it's one, two, four. If the, if the fraction read four over one, it'll be four to one. In this case, it's one to four. Our ratio will be one dot dot four, which is saying for every one of these, right, uh, you gotta divide by four to get to this other side, okay? So one divided by four. If I take 20, double, multiply by one fourth, I get five. If I take 16, I multiply by one fourth, I get four. And if you need to double check that, take out your calculator and do 16 times one fourth. Do you get four, right? Try to understand the math as we do it. So you can practice it. Hmm, how do you get that? Does that make sense? Okay, I'll explain it again. We would normally do to find the ratio, second, in this case, B divided by A, okay? And that's how you would get it. The perimeter here of A, we know we add up all the sides to calculate perimeter. So the way I would calculate the perimeter here, I'll do 20 plus 12. That gives me 32. 32 plus 16 is going to give me, give me one second, 48. 48. And this is going to be inches. Don't forget that this is the unit that we're using, which is inches. Okay? Okay? Now I'm going to go over to perimeter B, uh, and I'm going to also add up all the sides, 5, 4, 3. Right? This is going to give me uh, 12 inches. Notice how the perimeter and uh, of the bigger image fits the same scale factor, 48 to 12. If I multiply 48 by 1 fourth, I do get the perimeter of the second one. This is something important to understand, especially when you're looking at because I could give you the perimeter of the first image, 
and I could give you the sides of the image. And I would expect you to find the scale factor from the sides and realize that the scale factor from the sides can be multiplied by the perimeter of the first image to be found to find the perimeter of the second image or something along those lines. Okay. All right. I know this is a lot to take in, especially on the beginning of the video, but if you need to always, you can rewind the video, you can pause it, you can question it, you can put a question in Google Classroom so you can gain a better understanding as to what you're doing. We're going to talk about today finding the scale. Uh, we're going to find the distance using these scale factors, using, um, uh, uh, using, if you need to draw the image, feel free to draw the image, right? But we're going to find the scale um, distance between two images that are not drawn to scale. Right. So let's look at the actual modeling as I walk you through that. So for example, on a map, each grid unit represents 50 yards. And this, the actual uh, unit rate or scale ratio here is one unit to 50 yards. That's our scale ratio. One unit is equivalent to 50 yards. That's kind of what they're telling you here. Okay. They want us to find this from Patrick's point on this map to Agate Beach. Now you and I both know a map does not really calculate the exact distance that even though I can calculate how many units this is, I know that that's not the real distance of this actual from this space to this space. What I want to do first is actually draw myself um, a fraction to represent the scale ratio. And it's going to look something like this. One unit all over 50 yards, OK? This is my uh, unit uh, unit rate. I keep mentioning that because I want you to get ready for the new terminology. This is my scale ratio in this case, all right? I need to figure out what the distance is from Patrick's Point to Agate Beach. And the only way I'll do that is to really figure out um, how many units away is this on the map. Now, we're going to be talking about something called proportionals, proportional relationships later, uh, or write in proportional equations. In any case, this is an proportional, a proportional equation that we're going to write. One unit over 50 yards is equivalent to one, two, let me explain how I'm getting these numbers for you guys. One unit here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight units away on this map. So I'm gonna put eight units here, all over, and let's just call it my question mark for now. We both know that that's gonna be yards, but I do want to understand, okay, well, one unit, um, one unit is 50 yards, eight units, how many yards? As I mentioned in, in the above, you want to take the second equation. Let me try to make it like this. Let's say that this is um, X. Let's say this is Y. Because I think this is going to help us when we go to find something called the unit rate later on, right? Um, I want to do Y divided by X. And this is going to help me figure out what I need to multiply the bottom by to get something called the constant, or let's call it the scale factor, because that's what we're calling it right now. Okay. When I do y divided by x, I'm going to do 8 divided by 1, and we know that's just going to equal 8, which means I'm going to take 50 yards, and I'm going to multiply it by 8. Okay. When I take 50 multiplied by 8, I get 400. Okay. Because obviously these are word problems, they have units next to them, Right, they have words that follow. You do need to indicate what this 400 represents. So in this case, if I go down here, it says the distance from Patrick's Point to Agate Beach is 400 yards. Okay. All right, let me recap how to do this once again, because I think what I did was pretty quick, and I want to make sure you understand. The first thing I did is I read my word problem. As usual in word problem, if you need to highlight, underline what's important. In my case, I would highlight and underline one unit to 50 yards, that's my scale ratio. And it's gonna help me find my scale factor, okay? Now, in this case here, I wanna be able to say, okay, I, I wanna find what the scale factor is, what is being multiplied to one unit to get to eight units. That's what we're thinking about. What is this being multiplied by to get to this? That's being multiplied by eight. One times eight gives us eight. The way you can figure that out is you could do y divided by x, you could do eight divided by one, you'll get eight, okay? And I want to show you this y of x because some of the, the numbers will be flopped. If this was 8 and that wasn't on that side, you need to still do y divided by x in order to get the scale factor. Okay? Once you have the scale factor, multiply the bottom part or the top part, numerator, denominator, whatever you're missing, 
uh, to find the, to find the missing number, multiply the other denominator or numerator to find it. So in this case, I have two yards. I need to figure out the other yardage. Multiply that also by eight. And that's how we got 400 yards in this case, okay? Take your time as you work through the word problems here. Uh, feel free to um, type in questions and comments in the Google Classroom page. Um, you can work with a teammate or a classmate if you like. Uh, but I'm hoping that you get it. If you need to rewind the lesson, watch it again. I know there's a lot of terminologies here, a lot of different things I'm bringing in and out for you guys to learn. But thank you so much for joining me for another math lesson with Mr. Whitford. And I look forward to um, seeing your comments and questions if you have. Thank you.